Hey there, AWS enthusiasts. This is Michael Forrester back with another exciting roundup of AWS tidbits and updates for the last month, August 2023. In today's video, we're going to be diving into a fascinating range of topics, but we're also going to be doing a little bit of an announcement because we had a cloud practitioner giveaway for a voucher to take the cloud practitioner exam. And we're just going to briefly announce the winners before we dive right into the topics at hand. So this week, we're going to be starting off with a dive into the code review GPT, which is a tool that uses LLMs to review your code. It's going to provide feedback and potential areas of improvement. So we're going to take a look at that tool inside of VS Code. Then we're going to dive into automated networking solutions for IPv4 exhaustion, which means what happens when you run out of IPv4 IP addresses. Next, we're going to talk a little bit about mount points for Amazon S3, which are now generally available. It means you can now use S3 as a file system without making API calls. We're also going to explore how you can create your own AWS well-architected chatbot with a repository provided by Vanjo Abayomi. And then for our GitLab users, our GitLab.com users, great news. CodePipeline now supports GitLab repos as a source repository for your AWS pipeline actions. Then we're going to walk you through the a new AWS Carpenter Workshop for EKS that offers a deeper dive into the cluster autoscaler known as Carpenter. And then we're going to talk a little bit about dedicated local zones, which are new zones, different from AWS local zones. These are dedicated local zones. They're designed for your exclusive use for compliance with regulatory requirements. And last, we're just going to visit an older paper that provides an in-depth explanation of how AWS Lambda functions work particularly how the challenges of dealing with large container images inside of Lambda. So there's a lot to unpack here. So get ready for a dive into the world of AWS. If you find this video helpful, please hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to stay updated with us for the latest AWS news and updates. Let's get started. So we did say we we're going to announce last week's winners from the AWS Cloud Practitioner Exam Voucher Contest. If you attended our live updates, then you definitely saw this. So note here that we have Mohammed Shaya, Tamil Mozi Gunasekar, Dudi Vara Prasad, Ansari Mohammed Akib, and Amar Bekluk. Please forgive my mispronouncing Western tongue if I got any of those wrong. But these are last week's AWS Cloud Practitioner voucher winners. Congratulations. Good job. And that means, by the way, that they took the course. They got a 100% on completion rate. They got a 95% plus on the mock exam and they posted it publicly and let the world know with certain hashtags. So again, congratulations on getting your voucher to take the AWS Cloud Practitioner exam at our cost. Okay, let's talk about the topics. It is worth noting that number one is that Code Review GPT uses LLMs to review our code. Here we are, and Code Review GPT is a repository that uses a variety of large language models to review your code. So this is actually going to streamline your code review process by providing some measure of feedback on code sections that have made areas or issues with improvements. And it can run it through many different models. So there's a great repository that hooks it up into VS Code. Totally worth checking out. Number two, this next poster update takes a look at how you can automate the assignment and recovery of IPv4 IP addresses in an EKS cluster, right? So it allows a, a custom networking pattern to, to be defined in your EKS blueprints. And so it allows you to custom automate some networking to overcome exhaustion in the elastic Kubernetes service that Amazon has. So that's number two, very much worth checking out. Number three, so remember all that time that you spent trying to figure out whether or not S3 was supposed to be mounted as a file system or whether you were supposed to just leave that to EBS, the hard drive service or EFS, the network file service, guess what? It's gotten easier and potentially less confusing because you actually can mount S3 inside of a file system. It's generally not recommended for performance reasons. AWS has found out that a lot of customers actually use file directory changes and batch workflows that are not gonna make API calls and they don't wanna have to write an application for that. So they created mount points for Amazon S3 that allows you to mount a file S3 as a file system inside of your Linux compatible operating systems. So this is now generally available. Now, obviously file systems like Lustre and others already had this capability, but now it's available for anybody who wants to download and install the mount points object, which is a, currently I believe it's an RPM, but it's probably actually an Ubuntu, another format. So you can install it into other flavors of Linux. That's number three. 
Number four is an awesome little post provided by Banjo Yomi, which is basically, it's gonna allow you to create a chat bot that has well versed in the AWS Well Architected Framework. So you may remember there are six pillars to the Well Architected Framework. So there's reliability, security, cost optimization, performance efficiency, sustainability, and operational excellence. And so you can actually get a chat, a chat bot that is trained to answer specific questions based on the documentation around the Well Architected Framework. The Well Architected Framework, by the way, figures strongly in almost all of the design exams that AWS has, and you can see smatterings of it in the other higher level associate and professional exams as well. You will, by the way, please note that you will have to have an open API key to use that chat bot, but it's totally worth checking out. That's number four. Number five is that AWS code pipeline supports github.com, but now it supports gitlab.com. So now you can actually use Git, uh, sorry, code pipeline to pull from third-party services that are hosting your repositories. So you can now use that as a source for your actions. That's number five. Number six, uh, AWS Carpenter now has a workshop. So if you haven't really touched this cluster autoscaler and you want to you know, kick the tires on and get familiar with it, um, there's now a, a EKS subsection for the Carpenter uh, autoscaling tool so that you can see it in action as it expands your cluster nodes, if you will. That's number six. Number seven, well, you may remember that we have global infrastructure. And we've got regions that are typically in a metropolitan area. We've got availability zones, which are basically data centers or clusters of data centers that are inside that region or metropolitan center. And then you've got local zones, which are pretty much outside of regions, but they act like availability zones. They just don't have any redundancy. They're like a data center, but also in major metropolitan areas like Atlanta or Boston, for example. So these are cities that have a dedicated data center just so you can create low latency applications. US has just released not local zones, but dedicated local zones, which are exclusively dedicated for private use by your company or your community if you want to get a group of universities or companies together. So these are dedicated, isolated security zones that operate like local zones, but they're dedicated just for your use, so there's no other customers in there. So check that out, post out if you're needing that level of security and compliance. And then last but not least, because this is always fascinating to me, because Lambda has been out since 2014, maybe 2013. It's been around for a minute. I'm always curious how they get Lambda to function at scale and how does it deal with containerization in particular. If you're curious about this work, number eight this week is actually an older paper that talks about how Lambda function works and how Lambda's function work. And particularly the challenge of loading large container images into Lambda in detail. So understanding how things works, by the way, allows you to architect it better. So understanding the behind the scenes of AWS Lambda can only help you, okay? So that's all eight of our tidbits for 2023. Totally appreciate you. Again, this is Michael Forrester. If you liked this update and you want more updates or you want more detail, leave us some comments, hit subscribe to our channel, and we'll catch you at the next video.